Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today we're discussing Deep Space Nine, Season 6, Episode 8, Resurrection. Mirror Burial turns up and tries to steal the Orb of Prophecy. Burial's back, the character everyone was clamoring to see. I, I love that twist. No, I, I say that in a mean way, but I actually love this. Of all the people to bring back, it's just so unexpected. There was so much finality to his death. And it happened a while back already, so to see him again was a shock. It made the first sort of half, first third of this episode very exciting. However, <laughs> it wasn't really sold on where the episode went. Why not? It turned out rather mundane and uneventful. It starts off with two incredibly clever twists one is bringing back an old character in a totally legit way so we've got mirror burial another one is flipping the mirror universe episode idea on its head they're invading us now so already it's exciting and then it turns into a sort of uh burial seeking asylum in this universe slash dealing with his life which was okay, and then he starts romancing Kira, which is a bit awkward. Why is it awkward? Well, all this stuff with her and Odo and the occupation of Deep Space Nine just happened. And she grieved for Burial for a long time. I don't know if she'd jump in bed with some dude that looks like him. Maybe she would. I don't know. He's not just a lookalike, though. He's a version of Burial. Well, you say that, but they repeatedly said they're nothing alike. <laughs> well, this version of Burial, I could actually understand why she's attracted to him. Oh, he's way better. <laughs> yeah. He's more charismatic. He's really buff. I guess the other Burial was, because obviously it's the same actor, but we never got to see him lifting weights or anything. I'm quite a fan of this reboot of Burial, and it's good to know my problems with Burial weren't with the actor, weren't caused by the actor. Well, I would say 95% of the time, if there's a character you don't like on a TV show, it's usually the writing rather than the actor. That, I mean, 95%, obviously, I just pulled that out of... Uh, the Mirror Universe? Yes. Having him be a thief and not really turning his life around, but then kind of, or whatever, and beaming out at the end was, to me, a very disappointing ending. It is disappointing. I wanted something more. If he was a thief, why didn't he steal something from the Mirror Universe? And then people might come after him to get it back. I don't follow. Why would he do that? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> rewriting the entire plot, but... <laughs> it's, he came to steal the Orb of Prophecy, which was... A plan no one would believe. I think that really seemed to lack credibility. I didn't understand why that's what they wanted to do. They said it would give them power, but I didn't understand why. Oh, well, I guess they don't have orbs in the mirror universe. Then why would they care if someone had an orb? Yeah, how did they know about it? The Mirror Universe Gazette. Let's see. 
So he came to steal that, apparently. But that just delegitimizes <laughs> the first half of the episode where he says, well, you've been to my university. You know, it is actually terrible. In comparison, this universe is like paradise to him. And why would you betray paradise? I, well, yeah. So, well, that's how the Bible starts, so never mind. Oh, uh, yeah, I haven't quite got that far yet. <laughs> so he kind of does all this, oh, I'm, I'm going to live here, this is nice. And then at the end, he's like, oh, I was a thief all along. But then he stuns Intendant Kira and says, oh, maybe I am okay, but I'm still leaving because of reset button reasons. I th they should have picked one angle. They went for Mirror Universe Invasion and swapped to the sort of personal storyline about asylum seeking and romance and then swapped to some random uh, other storyline. Oh, but yeah, what I was saying before. If he was a thief and he escapes to this universe, why wouldn't he have stolen something big before he came to what end so, so he's rich what else he steal <laughs> that just seems like it would be a more logical way to plot this episode if he had done a heist and made his break for the regular universe and people were coming to get him much confusion ensues that would have kept the more interesting stuff from the start of the episode going rather than jumping around into all these other plot lines that I don't care about. <laughs> How did you find the episode? I like the things that you've already mentioned that it's the mirror universe invading. We haven't seen that. It's always we're taken to the mirror universe and then the surprise of seeing Beryl again and how differently he's played and again we see Mir Kira again and she carries herself so differently that you can always tell which Kira is which even when they're in the same exact uh, uniform but it doesn't go to interesting places and the ending doesn't make sense he says I'm an irredeemable thief but I'm not going to steal right now but still I can't not be a thief, so I'm going to leave. It doesn't make sense. Other and, than this one instance. Yeah. And I don't understand what the big deal is with befriending a mirror version of a person. Cisco warns her, hey, don't get too close with mirror Beryl. And I have to ask why. Why is that bad? What if she forges a new relationship with this dude? Is that wrong? It's like dating twins, except one of them is dead and the other one's from an alternate universe. That is actually what went through my head during that conversation. Cisco just wants to make it look like he has some deep insight into this situation. Kira even disagreed with him. Cisco said, oh, when the light catches their eyes, they'll look like the real thing. And Kira's like, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and he just keeps going like, no, no, I have some sage advice here. No, really, I'm the emissary. You have to listen to me. <laughs> the whole orb stuff was so hard to... Uh, suspend my disbelief. So these orbs are priceless religious artifacts. And they don't have very many. They only have, I don't know, it seems about 10 or something. And they're easily accessible and unguarded. Yeah, why? There's, so there's one on the station, apparently. I guess that's the one from first episode which they haven't mentioned until now and they just let any random dude see it 
Uh, I guess. Did they look at his criminal history? Because he literally just got out of jail for kidnapping and stuff. That's all in the past. He's a new man. It's in the past by 12 hours, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Recent past, far past, it's all the same. Now you're talking like a prophet. Hey, the prophets don't understand time, so why should we be prejudiced uh, according to time? Well, I think my point is, he's dodgy and he might try and nick it. Yes. They have the most terrible security system. It like, was set in place by Odo. That's <laughs> terrible. It's so bad, a guy from another universe would walk in and disable it in ten seconds. No alarm. It's got no um, multiple authentication. Just one person can open it. Simple code. There's no two keys or two handprints or something. Hey, uh, someone could <laughs> access my savings account with just four digits and a card. Yes, that's a savings account. But if you had a hundred billion dollars in there, would you <laughs> maybe get better security? Maybe. These things are irreplaceable. Speaking of bad security, though, I must uh, compliment Bajoran security for handing out massages <laughs> <laughs> at the drop of a hat. That. That scene was uh, kind of the opposite of funny. Super funny? It was kind of funny, but for the wrong reason. In the same reason that people say things are so bad they're good. All right, th where did they get these guards from? Well, Bajor, I guess, but... They should hire some proper guards. If he was a Cardassian, he would not have made that mistake. No, never. He was just a simple farmer before this. I'm glad he got punched in the stomach so hard that he lost consciousness. Once again, we have Kira knocking someone out. It looks satisfying again. Not a visitor must have been... Taking Kung Fu lessons? That's the conclusion I'm drawing. That's logical enough for me. Dax has a line in this episode that really bothered me, and I'm sure it bothered you. Uh, um, can you think of what it is? How did dinner go? No, it's when she asked so That bothered Bashir, me because... Oh, God. That bothered me because she was at dinner with Kira. <laughs> so she knew. Not a very elegant way to hide her real motives. But no, it wasn't that line. It was when she asked Bashir, why didn't you download them into the computer? It's upload. She should know that. You don't download it into the computer. You upload it. Um... That's, yeah, I, I was trying to come up with some crazy apologist excuse, like the concept of directionality of computer systems had flipped, but there's no way that would happen. That stuff never changes. Oh, well, people could get lazy in how they refer to data streams. Uh, the word data, it's used for single and plural. No one says datum. So maybe that sort of thing happened, just to simplify everything is downloading. Old people already do that. Potentially, but I can't see that. No, I can't the, see it either, so the, I'll just these be mad at tied into the language. The bigger computer system is always above you. But Dex doesn't know what she's doing. She's just hanging about, so... Maybe she's never even used the computer. She has no idea what downloading is. Okay, this, we, this is harsh. We don't need to kick her while she's already down. 
I had a strange prediction during this episode. It didn't turn out to be true. And that's when they kept focusing on Barile's appetite. I thought, okay, there's going to be some kind of reveal why he keeps eating. Maybe he's wasting away. He has some sort of wasting disease. And so he's here to steal something so he can heal. It was, I'm glad they didn't do that because that's stupid. But that's what I thought. Having a poor memory of this episode, I also noticed that. And I thought they were going to go down the path of he can't digest mirror food. Like you can eat in a mirror universe, but it won't, you don't get nourished from it. Ah, that would have been interesting. Forcing... It was weird that they focus so much on it. Yeah, I definitely thought I was going somewhere. I thought he'd have to be, I thought he would be forced to return to the mirror universe. Because of the food. Yeah, I honestly couldn't remember. I remembered the first bit of this episode, but the rest was like a, a new episode for me. <laughs> that's exactly the, a great thing to say about it. That's this episode's greatest crime, is that it's boring and forgettable, the last half of it. So I'm not surprised you forgot about it. True. It's... Definitely a weak episode. It still has its charms, even though it's kind of bland. I agree, and it starts off so well, so it's a shame it doesn't go anywhere. For once, they actually listen to Quark. Oh, so, b right, before we get into that, Quark had this weird idea to make a circus show out of Barile. Yes, that was strange. It makes no sense. They have hollow suites. Why, why would you pay to see a thing which you can also see in a hollow suite? What he should have done is if he didn't have any sort of file of Barile for his likeness, then pay that guy to have him scanned and then sell the hollow suite program or sell, uh, people's usage of it well yeah he could have made a business deal like that i'll give you some time in the hollow suite if i can scan you and everyone then... knows that's not really vedic barail so you can't get away with no this is really him i swear yeah he died whilst negotiating a very notable treaty between <laughs> Bejo and cardassia people planet... aren't gonna just assume he was okay after that they mourn for him. They know he's dead. It wasn't a secret. I like the idea of Quark scanning him, and then he could have said, oh, I was going to sell the hollow image to the know, Vedic Museum or something. Could fetch a pretty penny. Because I didn't like that whole idea, I don't like how long they spent in that scene. If you're going yeah. to make that suggestion, just make it and then move on to something else. Again, I don't know if they knew what they wanted this episode to be. Romance or comedy or character revelation or what. They seem to keep jumping between them. That's probably why it's so forgettable. It just doesn't get stuck into anything. <laughs> just There's... pick one thing and do it well. <laughs> There's no balance of tone. It's all over the place. Which makes it more difficult for us to be engaged. As Mirror Universe episodes go, it was certainly the most... Uh... Not fun. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. I was going to uh, praise it for being actually kind of creative. They tried to apply some sci-fi ideas to the mirror universe concept. Kind of. I mean, they didn't try too hard, but at least it wasn't just a mindless action romp. Although, I guess that probably would have been better. <laughs> well, you don't know that in advance, though. No, and I love when they take chances, so I'm fine. It, I'm fine, even if it ends in a weak episode like this one. 
it's better that they try something new like this and fail than to be complacent and do the same things over and over. Another Mirror Universe action romp might have been just as bland because it would have been the fourth one by now. So if they had gone down that route, we may have been equally uh, displeased. Yeah, we can't assume we would have loved had they done that. So I guess it is good they took a chance. And even if most of the episode was not great, the teaser where Boreal comes out to teleport and takes Kira hostage is really good. Starts off strong, yeah. As long as you just stop watching about halfway through the first act, <laughs> you'll think it was probably an amazing episode. That's not usually how weak episodes go, either. You usually know fairly early, oh, this is not going to be good. But not the case here. The opener also works as an unspoken punchline that's kind of morbid. So she's thinking about who to take to dinner, and a bad answer to that is, hey, how about your dead boyfriend, Beryl? And then he <laughs> yeah. shows up. That was kind of the punchline to that conversation. That solves that problem. So when he's taking her to the runabout path, gun to her throat, she's like, oh, if you're not busy in a couple days, <laughs> I really need a dinner date. And I can't see your skull, so that's good. Right number of eyes. Zero percent oh, change. Not it's his brain, isn't it? Oh, right. It was, his yeah, brain. It's transparent. Yeah. The opacity settings are fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a quote of the show? I've always preferred to believe in nothing. That way, I'm never disappointed. Even if you don't believe anything, you can still be disappointed. I don't see how that guards you against disappointment. Well, you wouldn't be disappointed that your god or gods didn't intervene, but they never do anyway, so that doesn't stop religious people. <laughs> like, religious people don't seem constantly disappointed by the lack of their god's involvement. Maybe he should have said, I prefer to believe nothing, that way I'm never wrong. I don't know. The whole Bajoran thing is weird. They have their god's phone number. They can go chat to them. I mean, they never do, but the option is there. They can't bother them. They're busy being gods. Fair enough, but all the talk of belief and faith, they're right there. <laughs> they're just in the wormhole. You don't really need to... Uh, you don't need to have faith. Plus, they have the orbs. They're trippy as anything. Well, if you don't go in the wormhole yourself, you have to have faith that these people aren't talking nonsense who say they're in there. Okay, but there's empirical evidence of them, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of things I personally haven't seen, but would give full credence to, because it's well cited and sourced in any good encyclopedia. So, it's... It's weird that the Bajoran religion didn't really seem bothered by their gods actually turning up. It was prophesied that they would, so I think it confirmed stuff for them. Yeah, and they were just sort of okay with that. Sure, why not? They didn't really have a strong opinion on it. One of the greatest questions in philosophy since the beginning of time, is there a higher power? Uh, actually, yeah, there is. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we're done. I'll get back to my farm. 
that's all they need. And now they continue walking the path of the prophets, whatever that entails. So the fact that they're real and in some sense tangible creatures well, has you're looking very little at bearing. It. I mean, they believed anyway. They believed they were real anyway. So I guess it right. does make sense. They were always real to them. You're seeing it from a person who doesn't believe in the prophets, how it would shift your perspective because they would suddenly become tangible and real. But for them, they were always real. Perhaps, although I am uh, trying to... The point I'm trying to make is that they still mention faith a lot, but faith isn't really needed. Okay. You don't need to have faith they're yes. real. They are actually real. <laughs> they're there. Once you actually have the thing, you no longer need to have faith that you will have the thing. So, I'm sure Beryl could have made a great Vedic. It's weird the Bajoran religion doesn't seem to have a name. Oh, now that's going to bother me. <laughs> that out. I've never noticed. Yeah, I noticed that ages ago, but they always talk about the Vedics and the Kai and the other Prylars and stuff. But the that's actual the religion... and the emissary. Yeah, everything is named, but the actual religion doesn't have a name. I guess it's because, like, most races in Star Trek Bajorans are homogenous, so they don't need to name... But they would still have a, a word for it. Okay, how about this? It's a way of life. It's not a thing separate from Bajorans, so they wouldn't see to label it. But you would still need to talk about it. Like, nouns, nouns get applied to concepts all the time. Things get named. The religion would have a name. <laughs> It makes it very difficult to talk about if it doesn't have a describing name. The Way of the Bajorans. The Tau of Bajor. Anyway, let's just watch the next episode. Alrighty. Maybe the religion will get named in the next episode. And if we believe in nothing, we won't be disappointed by the episode. Yes! If, if it's bad. Let's do it.